Here's the thing. If Law is really dead, why didn't fucking Violet say anything? You know, instead of saying, oh, there, there's two left. No, bitch, a fucking D just died. You report the news based on the, on the amount of importance that it has. Law fucking dying, or I don't know, maybe his severed head lying on the floor. That's more important than Bellamy taken out. But maybe it hadn't happened yet, you know? Who knows? Uh, I'm, I'm just being a douche. But I think when Doflamingo decided to just start giving Law the smackdown for real was when Preble was like, Dofi! The, the factory's blown up, Dofi! <laughs> All right, bring me Munchery. We don't have Munchery, Dofi! <sighs> Law. That's when Law started getting it for real. Because everything up until that point was fixable. We get a flashback with Zoro, which I love because it involves Mihawk, and that's one of the most interesting parts of the time skip that we just don't know anything about. So I personally would like want to see more of this, and we will. Whenever Oda decides to reveal what Zoro's eye is, we'll, we'll probably get the same type of flashback explaining that. Uh, but anyway, this one's about hockey. We do see Perona there in the background. And this is how far in advance Oda plans shit out. Because he's like saying, oh, like, have your blades ever broken? I'm like, yeah, you broke them when we fought, remember? And Mihawk's like, well, if you had used hockey, that's how fucking long ago hockey was foreshadowed. Armament hockey, you know? Because you had the whole uh, Shanks saving Luffy foreshadowing King's hockey. But, yeah, so it's like, God, like, Oda knew that Zoro eventually had to fucking put something on his swords to make them stronger. A nick on your blade is a blemish to your pride. So until you learn this shit, no booze for you. It's always the honor code with these guys. Now, correct me if I'm wrong, but I think Fujitora has, like, some type of a barrier activated so that the rubble doesn't hit the civilians. Tontata destroy the factory so you know Kaido is coming for that ass. And then Kiros refuses to be healed by Manchuri. And this further supports something that I've been saying, that I've said in a previous review, that I think Kiros is pretty much set up to be the new king of Dressrosa, just because of the way that his character has been handled throughout this entire arc. He cares more about the people than he cares about himself, but he's not afraid of getting dirty, which is a pretty good balance. So I think he's kind of like the Dalton of this arc. Because remember, Dalton became king at the end of the Drum Island arc. Zoro mentions that the birdcage is still an indicator that Doflamingo is still at large. Uh, and I've seen some of your comments, like, and I'm, I, I agree with you, like, I just don't know why he can't just straight up cut. Not all of it, but at least cut a section so that people, if they want to leave, they can leave. And to be honest with you, I think the only reason he doesn't cut it is because of plot purposes. Like, Doflamingo has to be left to Luffy, so he looks more intimidating if the birdcage is still up. I'm gonna pull a screw attack on your ass. I'm gonna make a video, Luffy versus Zoro, the final matchup. I'm gonna have them fight, and then I'm gonna have a non-anime character beat their ass. People just love talking about power levels when it comes to One Piece. And it's interesting, because I didn't even see this amount of passion regarding power levels when it came to Naruto, so I think the best thing to do right now is just to wait and see how Luffy takes out Doflamingo, and then we can... I, I would make a video about it later on, I wouldn't mind that. But anyway, so Bellamy gets taken out. Another day, another one shot. I'm just kidding. Now listen, Bellamy to me is the prime example of somebody that I disagree with profoundly, but I still respect. Because you know this man knew that, that Luffy could take him. And yet he was still, you know, he still wanted to go out this way. He's like, I can't, I mean, I'm sorry, I've admired him. This is the way it has to happen, Straw Hat. Um, and it's the same kind of, it's a replica of the, I guess you could call it a fight uh, that happens in Jaya when Luffy basically does the exact same move. In this case, he hockeys up and I think he activates Gear Second, which I think that would kind of end up making a Red Hawk. I think hockey plus Gear Second ends up making a Red Hawk. The point is that Bellamy's knocked the fuck out and then we got Dofi saying, hey, by the way, Law is dead. Of course, Oda doesn't show it because we have a one week hiatus coming up. Luffy gets all pissed off and he's like, Dolph, listen, that is going to sound epic in the anime. I cannot wait for that voice acting to kick in. Here's the thing. If that's how pissed off he is because of Bellamy, can you imagine how pissed off he's going to get when he sees Law's body in shreds? But people, on a serious note now, seriously, we already know who the star of this arc is going to be. Who did Koala call? My man Sabo is going to torch Treble. That is a fucking fact. Remember, Treble 
is made out of flammable substance. So if you see a fucking explosion, we know what's up. It was my man Sabo. This is his time to shine. I, I, I actually thought Oda was pushing him to the side, but now he's bringing him back in to finish up this arc. Luffy and Sabo combo. The population of Dressrosa is going to be jizzing all over the place. It's going to rain white substance. Sabo is going to take Treble down. I would bet my house on it if I had a house. If there's such a thing as masterfully done build up, this chapter would be it. Amazing. You know the drill. Comment, like the video if you didn't, subscribe to my channel for more One Piece reviews. I'll catch you guys later. Bye.